Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are sort of in the middle of things. I had previously launched a bunch of communication satellites, so let's see what I should do this time. Our current antennae aren't that great for going to Mars. We barely made Venus, I felt, and that's by putting a lot of power into the antenna. Uh, right now, we've got electrics though. Uh, so COM level 4, and there's this interplanetary COM dish which I had adjusted. So maybe this one is okay. Let's see. Let, before I pick up the contract for Mars, let's see in the VAB whether that particular dish is going to be good enough for Mars or not. Uh, when we're going to Mars, of course, we're not going to get as much power as we did going to Venus. We're going to end up with half the power that the solar panels get at Earth. So, yeah. We can't have our comm dish taking that much power. So taking a look here. Yeah, we had a little this little tiny comm dish, but uh, we were putting in uh, whatever it was, 50 decibel milliwatts of transmit power, which equates to 240 watts here. Though now we have tech level 4, that doesn't help anything. Okay, so uh, whatever tech level 4 does, and help that. So we want to see if this new comm dish, which has a little bit more uh, stuff but is actually much larger, uh, can help us more. So we'll try expand again. Though that just increases the transmit uh, rate. So that station and Mars. Well, for uh, 30 is no connection. Okay, so we would need 51 decibel milliwatts to cover it at max distance. Now, we could decide that we are not going to cover at max, dist max distance and just hope that we don't have to deal with max distance. <laughs> that, that's an option. Um, but, yeah, maybe we should. The ground uh, station tech level thing, I haven't figured out how to fix that yet. So we're stuck to X-band for now. Um, and yeah, S-band would, would give us this. So no connection and then we'd have to bump it up to, well, 52 instead of 51. But we'd have a lower transmit rate, so. So yeah. 300 watts is what we're looking for here. And yeah, uh, the CubeSat solar panels, we, we need to go away from this anyway. We now have the other, we have the CubeSat solar panels that aren't attached to a CubeSat. So we can use those, but we actually with electrics also have these solar panels. Which are probably more legit. Too bad I can't test them without paying the entry cost. At least RP1, you can test it without paying the entry cost. But anyway. Um, well, let's see. How long does the Mars contract give us? We could do Science Day from space around the moon now. Maybe we should land on the moon again. Unfortunately, there's no re uh, repeater uncrewed lunar lander mission here. There is a repeater uncrewed... Lunar Impactor mission. Mars flyby. Five years. That's a little bit tough. That gives us two chances, basically. How's the planetary alignment? Oh gosh, we're basically at the Mars window right now. 38 days. Can we get a re rocket built in 38 days to just do a quickie to Mars? Maybe we should do a test one to Mars before trying to pick up the contract, because the contract penalty is pretty severe. So maybe we'll go for science. We've got a fair amount of cash, though of course we have to upgrade the R&D building, which costs a lot. Let's see about going for science. Oh, there's the old early controllable core. Well, we've got a more modern controllable core here. Let's replace this with one kilonewton thruster. And we definitely need much more solar panel. 
I'm pretty sure these are gonna be too big. 630 sounds nice though. Oh yeah. These are a bit underpowered, but that's because they're static level 1 solar panels. And yeah, that's that I'm gonna I'm just gonna have to put more solar panels to adjust this because we shouldn't be at level one in the year two thousand. We should be at level six or whatever, level seven, maybe even level eight. Uh, we do need the backup batteries. How many will we lose on the trip to Mars? I don't know. These are probably OP, but then again, they are advanced solar panels, not level two. Level one and level two are like 1960s solar panels, so oh, it's really tough to judge. But we'll still need quite a lot of these and probably facing the same direction. Let's say we want them facing the back. The goal here is not, uh, to have them not stick out too much. How much power does that actually get us? Hmm, <laughs> 78 a piece, but at Mars it'll be half, and this thing wants 300, again, at max distance. Well, a bit weird, but this may be a good way of going about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Serenity Mars, I guess. Let's see if the Serenity rocket can actually send us to Mars. Well, with this satellite, we might as well just make this stage the same diameter as that stage, huh? Okay, well, I sized that up a little bit so we're overweight. Um, I think Delta V-wise were okay, though. We just need to fly by Mars. We just need to fly by Mars. I don't know, I think maybe we should just except that this won't be able to communicate from from uh, the max distance to Mars and just have it communicate from let's say 300 let's say if it's 300 gigameters because that uh, just going from 400 gigameters which is the max distance to 300 uh, lets us cut the power requirement in half so I think we'll go with that and if we happen to meet up with Mars at the max distance, well, shucks. The problem is we need to build this a little bit quicker. Uh, we have 38 days, Kerbal alarm clock said. We'll just alar add that alarm. Now, Mars windows are about a month long, so we have some wiggle room for that. But yeah, 38 days. This says 52 days to build this. So we're going to rush it a little bit. See, we can even rush it with Kerbal construction time. Okay, so so even build. Hopefully, I'm not forgetting anything again. Oh, I haven't put any science though. Ah, uh, okay. Let's put some science. I I probably need to remind myself to adjust the attachment node of those. Okay, so we're going to rush build this. With magic. No. <laughs> 31 days should be good enough. Okay, well, it's daylight. We'll see what we get to launch in daylight. We just line up with the moon for the rest of the system. Okay, oh, relative inclination is going up. But I think I can correct that on the fly, and it's not exactly right for the rest of the system anyway. So SAS on, throttle up like that, and ignition. We have four engines, and go. Okay, fairing set. Okay, staging. I am deliberately trying to drop down to uh, get a lower orbit because we went too high initially. Oh, you don't need the Mars window anymore. When is the next Venus window? Oops, I just... that was... 124 days. Maybe we'll make... build a Venus mission to try and get into Venus's atmosphere and land while this is on its way.
Okay. All right, we are in orbit, 132 by 204. And Mars. Well, these days, Maneuver Planner likes me to bring it out first and then target Mars. Okay, as soon as possible. As soon as possible is 5,000. Look, that's not right. <laughs> I am, I'm not doing 5,000. The um, lowest is the next time. Look, there's got to be something else. It, it wants me to wait until there. Uh, which is fine, we've got hypergolic fuels here. But, or storable fuels, but... I don't know about our batteries and other RCS ports and our systems, so... Well, we'll try to wait. I mean, that's three months though. Hmm, I wonder if it'll survive. I guess this is an interesting thing to test. Now, I don't know if it even gets failures when we're not paying attention to it. So we're not going to pay attention to it, and we'll see how it does. We are going to orient for sunlight. Oh, but this, this body is going to be in the way, isn't it? The way I configured the solar panels did not account for this body hanging out for a long time. Okay, maybe I should try... Oh, then that, that changed completely. Uh, okay, maybe I should try and plot a maneuver myself. Instead of using MacJeb. I don't think we can wait because our power will die. But MacJeb is probably right. Probably did this the wrong time. It's gonna take all my Delta V somehow, isn't it? <laughs> okay, maybe there's a way of optimizing this, because right now it's taking a little bit more than my delta V. 4,430 plus 546 is 4,976. <laughs> so, six more than we've got. Um... And, you know, that's not counting the RCS stuff and whatever inaccuracy this has because we were using the little CubeSat panels. Uh, so, mm, the timing of this might be not right anymore because we shifted things around. Let's see if this can be done. No, okay, this is now the descending node. It's a little bit higher up. That's nicer. This is all because we can't wait because of the solar panels. You know what, uh, we'll, we'll just go with it, and we're more interested in seeing whether we have enough redundancy for the actual mission. We haven't actually picked up the contract, we're seeing what goes wrong, so... We, yeah, let's, let's see what happens. We'll just go with this for now. We're probably not gonna have enough. You know what, to save fuel, I'll turn it. Maybe because we're dipping down closer to Earth, we'll have a little bit of a boost from that? Maybe? I should just put Transfer Window Planner in. Okay, go. Okay, staging. Trusty one kilonewton thruster. See? Exactly one kill Newton. This isn't looking good though. It looks like the inaccuracy in the Delta V reading is leading us to have, we're not gonna have enough. So... Yeah. Yep, we're not gonna have enough. So, we'll have to adjust for that. Maybe we just need to make a bigger rocket. Oh, okay, okay, well, all right. Well, we can't do that correction as is. 127, we probably don't even have 127. Okay, yeah, I mean, we're not going to get there. But we'll see whether this probe can survive with the batteries it has, I suppose. So with 600, we would encounter it, but we don't have 600. 
Okay, but we will see how it's doing, not at that maneuver node, but when it's at its apoapsis, we'll just take a look at it to see if it's still alive. All right, so we've gotten information from this, and we'll try and keep it alive by pointing its rear end at the sun and everything. I suppose we can get, we can point point two signs, but I'll just leave that for now. Okay. So it's on a roll, and let's try and focus on this Venus mission instead. So landing on Venus, four years. That's, that's a big failure. <laughs> I, I think we've already got some tech queued up so we don't have to worry about that. We're still working on command modules so once we get those we'll start crude things. We'll try to land on Venus and I guess we might as well get surface data from Venus too and science data from space around Venus. Uh, that's that's a worrying failure thing. Terror all the way there. Yeah. Okay, well, first we need the actual re-entry portion. Now, we have learned that we should not put things right next to the heat shield. And we've got this, uh, this procedural shielded tank that has better heat tolerance that we can use. So we're going to use it. Just a tiny one. But anything is better than putting it directly on the heat shield. So, and then we're going to oversize the heat shield a bit. Maybe we should go for a lunar rated one. That's a good point. We do have lunar rated heat shields, so yeah. We didn't previously have those unlocked, so. Oh, sorry, my cursor was not active because I was doing things that did not involve the cursor, so yes. If you were wondering about the cursor, it's back now. And then we have to have parachutes, and I'll put the RCS thrusters back on. I guess six will use two parachutes, though. If you're wondering whether we need so many RCS thrusters, I'll remind you that redundancy is good in this case. Oh, scrap is still waiting. But this just has a little bit of RCS propellant for orientation. We need a bus. Will this survive? I don't know. Let's see about the pad upgrade. I think it's time. I've pushed things... I mean, probably we uh, our first stage... Well, maybe we could change our first stage engines. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe we haven't pushed things as far as we can. Maybe it's time to go away from the Reaver engines. I think we probably have better first stage engines now with the technologies that we've unlocked. Okay, so... Yes, the Reavers only get 295 at, in vacuum, after all. You know, we've got the Shearstrut engines. Maybe it'll be more amusing to use one of the real Rocket Company engines, though, but Reaver is sort of on the high end of some of those. Uh, well, this certainly gets more efficiency. The ignitions aren't too bad, either. Let's just unlock engine 2. Engine 2 also has a vacuum one, which is really good. We should really get both of those. And the but the ether engine is pressure fed, so we still have to have this tank. Mm, still doesn't get what we want, but we were going for one ton, so mm, still doesn't get what we want. Methane. A little methane upper stage. Oh, we might as well get it. Oh gosh, not so little. Okay, well, another one of these? I mean, sometimes that's the best way to go. No, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Okay, 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 that's, that's enough. We need a new pad. Upgrade. Yeah, um, but we're probably not going to get that done in time. 275 days. We should probably increase the VAB points now. 
Oh, but we don't have the inline one. Well, we'll just put it radial at the top there then. Maybe just two and then... Yeah, I don't want it to come out too early. Oh, right. While we're upgrading the pad, we can't... Okay, but we're upgrading pad two. We can switch back to... Oh, pad one is already upgraded. Oh, I forgot all about the fact that we have pad two and pad one. Ah, uh, pad one is already upgraded. Hold on, we might have time to fix this. Fortunately, upgrading the pad doesn't mean we can't launch smaller rockets off of it. That at least we have a benefit over RP1 on. Uh, I'm upgrading uh, launch pad two, but still we will be able to launch smaller rockets on it. And that'll be nice. Okay, so this pad actually has the 800 ton limit. We have basically no constraints anymore at all, but um, okay, Phew. all right, let's let's do this. Uh, how long can you guys go for down there? Oh, it's only they're only two minute engines though. Well, we're going to have to put nine of them or something because that's traditional. It shouldn't be called Serenity anymore. We can call it Rocket Nine. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually already beyond the burn time on this one. It's only five minutes. Do we have real decouplers now? Yes, we do. Okay, we're going to slap on some boosters, uh, even though it has a 1.68 thrust weight ratio. But we need that because they only have a two minute burn time anyway, so... Oh, wait a minute. Um, oh, okay. 154, so we can extend this a little bit. But still, it's got a pretty high thrust to weight ratio. We need it. Uh, they'd be better paired with an upper stage that has longer burn time. Hmm. Maybe back to engine 2? Hmm. So. Burn time's 10 minutes on that, so that's okay. We're getting close, though. And actually, we've passed the point where increasing that tank does any good. We're actually decreasing our delta V by increasing the size of the upper stage. Okay, we're going to call this Rocket 9. because it's based on the engines from Rocket 1, and there's nine of them, so... When there's nine of an engine, you have to call it whatever nine. Should be more than enough Delta V to get to orbit. It's about the transfer. Uh, maybe we should take the less Delta V and get more for the transfer. Well, those are mega changes to this. 57 tons. Anyway, save edits. Okay, our new and improved launch pad here. Well, we just line up at the moon. Please be counting down. No, it's counting up again. Oh, we'll wait a day. I'm really far away from it? No, oh, I guess a little bit further. Oh well. Okay, SAS on, dial up, and this is the first time we're using these engines, so could be rough. Why is our connectivity so low, though? Shouldn't we be communicating from this pad? That might be a flaw. Okay, ignition. We can go with one engine out. I'm going. Maybe the upgraded pads don't have the right comms or something. Rocket 9. Okay, just about done here. And stage it. Well, first time using this engine as well. We're, we're really with Launcher Space's engines. We've got Engine 2 on the first stage, Engine 2 vacuum up here. But that's probably because I've got too high... But it is what they said for a specific impulse for engine 2 vacuum, so, I mean, what can I do? Um, but it is probably optimistic. 
Okay, fairings. And we'll get this little relay antenna out too. Doesn't boost anything though. All the local communications is UHF. Up, oh, sunlight, sunlight. Going like just outside the atmosphere here. Okay. This is a pretty small stage. I'll let it take us all the way to orbit. Okay, so we are in orbit. Very close on the periapsis side, but with our luck we'll be burning out of the apoapsis side. Um, let's just ditch the stage for now. Okay. Well, oh, let's bring Mechja about first. And then target Venus. No, not Mercury. Come on. ESAP. Oh, that's not too bad. We're in good shape. This time. This time we're in good shape. Okay. Haven't really worried about comms too much recently. But let's just see. Yeah, we should be fine. We are on the way up, but not actually at Apoapsis at least. Okay, and go. On to Venus for a potential landing. Right side, we've got a lot of data on these and they can relight. But we'll see if they survive. Okay, we'll do the rest with RCS. Let's see what we need to do here. Okay, that bit we'll do a mid-course correction for. But we do want to hit the atmosphere, as horrible as that's going to be. Alright, so we've got that scheduled. 